is I'm the one you lost, and in this video I'm going to show you my thought process and how I made this artwork of Bay from Hololive. So if you watched the previous video on my channel where I did the sketch, um, the goal in the sketch was to push my rendering and kind of plan things out really, really early. So when it came to the line art, everything fell into place because the sketch was so on point, I guess would be a good way to put it. But my goal in this artwork was to do clothes a lot better than I usually do while still making it look like anime. Meaning it was going to be more of a mix of soft and cell shading at the same time. And I was really concerned going into it because I did not have a good reference for the clothes. I was afraid that it would it would bomb. But for the most part, I think I did pretty good. And it's a step forward to where I want to be with my artwork. So, uh, another thing you'll notice whenever it comes to specifically the hand is I started one way, but then changed it to another way because I thought it just looked so clunky and not very nice looking. So, in the end, um, I ended up just raising the pinky to make it look a little more feminine and less like, like a man grabbing a skirt, if, if that makes sense. Like, there needs to be just a little bit of feminine... <laughs> femininity there um god dyslexia really messes with me when i try to say certain words so uh yeah that, that's a thing you now know that i might have i've never actually been diagnosed but my mother has it so maybe i shouldn't say i have it <laughs> so we'll, we'll just say i i struggle to say words how about that um i was actually super super proud of how i did the skirt here it's probably the best skirt i've ever drawn and considering I had no reference for it, it makes me even more proud that I managed to make it look as good as it ended up being. So, plated skirts. I, I might, if, like, fingers crossed, I might have figured out how to draw them. <laughs> Another thing you'll notice is I draw a lot of squish. Now, um, the squish in the thigh, as nice as it looks, the reality is her, she's probably got no blood circulation to her legs because that is a heck of a bend. But, for the most part, it looks good, and it's rule of cool, not necessarily fully practical. So now we're getting somewhere. We're getting to the point where things are starting to kind of fill out. There's a bit of a jump here because I was, like, testing to make sure the line art looked good. But we're adding it back, and we're going to start adding the rest of it. Um, I did the eyes the same way I've been doing them lately, but I changed the shape slightly. It's always good to... Uh, not stick with the same eye shape every single time. At least that's a personal opinion of mine. I feel like if you do the same eyes every single time, um, what'll happen is they'll start to get kind of boring. So you can take the techniques you've learned, but add little things to it to make it better, if that makes sense. So the hair, I went really detailed this time. In fact, maybe a little too detailed, because the reality is, like, m I draw such thin lines, and even if I go into all this detail in the lines, people aren't even going to see the lines, they're just going to see the hair, so, like, you know, some people might say, why do I bother, but I, I really enjoy line art, and it looks super clean, and it makes me very, very happy. And I'm of the personal mindset that lines can help guide rendering a whole lot. So if you have good lines, it might help you figure out where your uh, rendering and your shading needs to go. Now, if that doesn't work for you, you can try learning how to draw without doing lines at all. Now, some people are really, really good at that. I have a few friends who are artists as well who do phenomenal work without drawing any lines. So. It, there's no one correct way to draw. This is just the way I do. Um, you'll notice that every single intersect point in my line art gets thickened because you can technically cheat and do this with pen pressure, but I'm really, really like, like nitpicky about it, so I want to do it by myself intentionally. Um, you'll notice that whenever I draw these lines, I just copy and paste them to kind of like cheat it a bit, if that makes sense. Um, whenever you're doing straight lines and stuff for the background, it's actually really, really good to just cheat. Um, we are starting with the base colors and we're kind of just 
we're going to do mainly just the character when we put in the base colors, and then we'll focus on the background later. It's really good to understand color theory when picking colors because the goal for the most part is to pick colors that aren't all the same hue or saturation level. You want to like play around and go to different places so it draws the eye a bit more. You add more saturation to where you want people to look, less saturation where you don't. It's the same thing with detail. More detail where you want people to look, less detail where they're looking, where, where you don't want them to look. Man. My brain's not working so great. So now we've got the base colors and it is time to start the render. So I'm gonna try to explain this as I go. It's a bit complex, but let's let's uh, do our best. Oh, well, apparently I did do the background real quick. So there we go. Now the rendering. <laughs> So I actually started with the shirt this time because the goal for this artwork was to plan out and do clothes a lot better than I have done in the past. So we start with kind of some cell shading and then we use the uh, C key to turn the brush or the airbrush into an eraser and slowly take away um, tone. And what that's going to do is it's going to let us create a terminator line, which is the line where the light just hits it and creates like a, a slightly darker edge. Then whenever you add an add glow on top, it makes it shine way more. Now for the breasts, in certain areas I highlight it and use the selection tool to go to each individual breast. Whenever I draw the line for where the head casts a shadow, the goal is to draw things um, where the hair is oversecting. You'll notice that the skirt on the legs is particularly like shining or casting a shadow, so keep that in mind. Now we're getting to the point where we're going to start doing the skirt. This I rendered this one so quickly. I was just firing on all cylinders, which is not usual for me. So I'm actually super proud. So here we go. Now I want to start with the cast shadow first and then slowly erase the sides to kind of add a little more light back into it. I added a blue rim light underneath the skirt to kind of make the, the separation between the skin and the skirt to be very present. I also start with the hard light or hard shadow on the hair and then make that terminator line again because things that are more shiny or metallic or organic have a terminator line. And if you need to know in better detail than I can do, there's plenty of like uh, rendering videos and studies that talk about the Terminator line, so I recommend that. We're adding some post-processing now to kind of make it pop, use the hard light layer, uh, kind of erase the, the hair and kind of add a glow to it to where it kind of blends into the background. And now we're getting somewhere. We're adding the tags back, and what we're going to do with those is we're going to blur them so they look like they're in the foreground. I'm now adding a multiply layer on top of everything to make it look like there's a, a light cutting through but there's something above her if that makes sense it kind of adds some a level of dramatic lighting to it and now with all that post-processing we are pretty much done adding some glow to kind of separate it tonal curve and there we have it if you like this video like comment subscribe hit the bell helps me out a whole lot i'll see you guys next time bye